It is great to be back. And uh, this, this has become a, a regular pulpit for me, and uh, I always appreciate coming back to Chongdong First Methodist Church and to preach at your English ministry service. Uh, as a United Methodist, I, uh, I appreciate and uh, believe in the power of connectionalism. And uh, e even though I'm coming today in my new capacity as the president of Claremont School of Theology, I see so many of my, my former students from, uh, from different institutions going back to my time at Pacific School of Religion, where I was teaching for almost 20 years, and then my students from, uh, from Drew Theological School uh, are here as well, uh, and, and uh, alums as well as, as people from the denomination. I see uh, the, the Damarash here as well in, in, uh, in this worship service. And so uh, I appreciate the kind of connection everywhere I go, seeing people that are connected in so many, many different ways. I want to thank your, uh, your pastors, Dr. Lee, and also your senior pastor, uh, Dr. Kisong Song, for the kind invitation to visit and to, to worship with you, as well as to bring the message to you this afternoon. Let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I am against rest. Let me repeat. I am against rest. Not for other people, that is, but for myself. That's what my family frequently accuses me of. But in my defense, I can hardly be blamed. You see, I grew up in a hard-working Chinese family in Malaysia. My parents lived through the Second World War. My father started his automobile parts business when he was very, very young. Being Chinese and having lived through the Second World War, the Chinese ethic of hard, working hard was ingrained in him. For the most part of his life, he would work 16 hours a day, seven days a week. In fact, growing up as a child, I can hardly remember seeing my father taking a rest. What does, what does it mean to keep the Sabbath? Why is keeping the Sabbath so important? Why did this prophet in the book of Isaiah encourage the people to call the Sabbath a delight or to take delight in the Sabbath? The biblical text I'm using for our sermon comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verses 9 to 14. This text in the book of Isaiah is from the period after the exile. This was a time of reconstruction. Look at verse 12. A time of repairing the walls and restoring the streets to live in. More importantly, it was a time of the rebuilding of the community, the building of a new community. These few verses discuss two important rituals, that of fasting and the Sabbath. Much of the theology in these verses are not new. Part of it is old theology, yet ever so important. These are not just rituals. They are spiritual practices, practices that the prophet was encouraging the people to keep. 
We need, however, to go back to the beginning of the chapter to look at the larger context of our text. The prophet is called upon by God to announce to my people their rebellion. Or in the Jewish translation, the Jewish text that is translated, it literally says, declare to my people their transgression. In fact, God wants the people to shout out to raise. He wants the prophet to shout out to raise his voice like a ram's horn. Because there is an important message that God wants to be sure that everyone hears it. God wants the prophet to let God's people know their transgression and their sins. Their daily prayers and their fasts are unacceptable to God because these are not accompanied by acts of justice and mercy. In verses 6 and 7, the prophet lists what these acts of justice and mercy are. To lose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, to break every yoke, to share your bread with the hungry, to bring the homeless poor into your house, to cover the naked, and not to hide yourself from your own kin. While the earlier verses focus on fasting, this part of the text relates to the Sabbath. Why is the Sabbath so important for the prophet? Why is it so important in the Jewish tradition? In Jewish theology, the tradition of the Sabbath goes way back to the creation. In the creation story, we are told that God speaks creation into being and each day something new is created. From the creation of the light in the first day to the creation of humanity in the sixth day. Then we read these words in Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that God had done and God rested on the seventh day from all the work that God had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that God had done in creation. We are taught that God creates the world in six days, and on the seventh day, God rests. Yet, if we read the text closely, we discover that on the seventh day, God finished the work God had done. The ancient rabbis, the ancient rabbis teach that on the seventh day, God created menucha, literally meaning rest. In the deepest possible sense of fertile healing stillness, menucha is rich in meaning, literally meaning rest. It can mean tranquility, serenity, peace, and repose. So for the rabbis, it is not until the creation of Shabbat, of Sabbath, that the creation was finished. Only after the birth of Menuhah, only with tranquility and rest, was the cycle of creation made full and complete. The rhythm of work and Sabbath rest is embedded in this creation theology. It is God himself who models this rhythm, this rhythm of work and rest. 
Yet in the busyness of our modern life, we have somehow lost the rhythm between work and rest. In our drive for success, we are seduced by the promises of more. More money, more recognition, more satisfaction, more love, more information, more influence, more possessions, more security. We work hard and harder for all these, in part fueled by an ethic of working hard. A book that has been very important in shaping my thinking about Shabbat, about Sabbath, is Wayne Mueller's book entitled Sabbath, Finding Rest, Renewal, and Delight in Our Lives. Mueller reminds us that, quote, a successful life has become a violent enterprise. We make war on our bodies, pushing them beyond their limits. War on our children, because we cannot find enough time to be with them when they are hurt and afraid and need our company. War on our spirit, because we are too preoccupied to listen to the quiet voices that seek to re nourish and refresh us. War on our communities, because we are fearfully protecting what we have and do not feel safe enough to be kind and generous. War on the earth, because we cannot take the time to place our feet on the ground and allow it to feed us, to taste its blessings, and to give thanks. We work so hard that the four words, I am so busy, have become a refrain and a standard greeting. Too often we take pride in saying those words as if they have become a virtue. I am personally very guilty of this. In many ways, I have learned it very well from my father about the ethic of hard work, but have often gone overboard with it. I constantly encounter people who are guilty of the same. Moving from one thing to another, one meeting to another, with hardly any time to rest. I see my faculty and staff working hard all the time. I see my students working hard all the time, many without sufficient sleep and rest. In particular, I see it among many of my Korean students who often work doubly hard. Pastors work hard all the time to the extent that they feel guilty when they try to take a day of rest. I know also of people who are retired but have kept themselves very busy that oftentimes rest is not part of their living vocabulary. Muller shares the story of a doctor. Charles is a gifted, thoughtful physician. One day we were discussing the effects of exhaustion on the quality of our work. Physicians are trained to work when they are exhausted, required from the moment they begin medical school to, perf to perform when they are sleep-deprived, hurried, and overloaded. I discovered in medical school, Charles told me, that if I saw a patient when I was tired or overworked, I would order a lot of tests. I was so exhausted, I couldn't tell exactly what was going on. I could see the symptoms, I could recognize the possible diagnosis, but I couldn't really hear how it all fit together. So I got in the habit of ordering a battery of tests, hoping they would tell me what I was missing. But when I rested, if I had the opportunity to get some sleep, to go or go for a quiet walk, when I saw the next patient, 
I could rely on my intuition and experience to give me a pretty accurate reading of what was happening. If there was any uncertain, uncertainty about my diagnosis, I would order a single, specific test to confirm or deny it. But when I could take the time to listen and be present with them and their illness, I was almost always right. End of quote. The ancient Israelites understood our human propensity to forget the Sabbath, to get ourselves out of the rhythm of work and Sabbath rest. Thus, in the Ten Commandments, we are told, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. We are reminded to break the cycle of work with rest. We are reminded that we must keep the rhythm of work and rest. We are reminded to make rest a sacred activity of our lives. In this text of Isaiah, the prophet encourages the people of God to call the Sabbath a delight. For this prophet, it is no longer just about remembering the Sabbath. It is about delighting in the Sabbath. Here the word oneg is used. It eventually became a classic term for the mood of the Shabbat. Oneg Shabbat, delight or joy in the Sabbath. Keeping the Sabbath cannot be an onerous thing. Observing the Sabbath cannot become overly legalistic. In fact, Jesus ran into the problems with the legalism of the observation of Sabbath when he was criticized for healing on the Sabbath. For us Christians, keeping the Sabbath is not just about going to church. It cannot be reduced to participation in church activities. Keeping the Sabbath is about breaking, is about taking a break from work and tasks. It is about resting. When we say no to making some things happen, we give permission for other things to happen. When we cease from our daily labor, other things like love, friendship, prayer, touch, singing, rest, can be born into the space created by our rest. This is when we begin to find joy in Sabbath rest. This is when delighting in the Sabbath becomes real. When we delight in the Sabbath, our bodies are restored. Our spirit is renewed. And our soul is tended to. When we practice Sabbath rest, we have the time and energy to attend to our relationships with our husbands or wives, with our children, with our sisters or brothers, and with our friends. In turn, we are able to live healthier lives and maintain better relationships. When we know how to find joy in the Sabbath, we become better human beings who care for the lives of others and seek their shalom, their well-being. Just as the prophet talks earlier about fasting that must be followed by acts of justice and mercy, the ritual and practice of Sabbath, of Sabbath rest, renews us to do acts of justice and mercy. When we learn how to rest, we will learn to take better care of the earth. We learn to stop exploiting and desecrating the earth and learn to find the earth and learn to help the earth to find rest as well. 
when we take a rest from routine work, we make room for creativity to happen. And so may we all make Sabbath rest our spiritual practice. Amen.